I think there's reason for, for really great optimism that next year by Easter, everything will start to feel normal. Summer holidays will be there. Really optimistic. I and mean, there are three front runners that have been proven to have um, a disease preventive effect in randomized trials. And there are three other vaccines on the way. And if the first three work, the last three will work. And then there are another 200 in the pipeline. But you know, we've got enough now, and they're with big companies that can produce the, the, the world supply. The other good news from the early part of the trials is the prevention actually started within 14 days of immunization of the second immunization. So that's really good. You don't have to wait two or three months before you get immunity. So that means it, it's all up to the logistics of administering the, the vaccine. What, what's very curious, looking at the data only yesterday of hospital admissions and number of people actually in hospital, it's dropping. It's dropping already. So it's good news, even without the vaccine. What the vaccine means is it's not going to return. If we can block it now, it's clearly going to come down. Everything's going to come down. The deaths come down the last. So although it's sad, that's the way it is. But the number of people going into hospital is dropping. So as we move forward with the vaccine, it's not likely to rise again. So um, Christmas will be a bit odd, but after Christmas, once we've got the vaccine out there, waited 14 days for the second shot, we should be in a much, much better place, the whole of society. The people involved in acute medical care of COVID patients have got a lot smarter. You know, in, in February, we knew very little when it started. And the old patient came in, if their oxygen levels in their blood fell below 96, you take oxygen and then you put them in an intensive care unit and you ventilate. We know that's not necessarily the best way forward. Sure, you have to maintain the oxygen, but it doesn't need to be that high. And ventilation has its drawbacks. It damages the lung, the pressure of the inspired phase of ventilation when it push the oxygen in damages the lung, which is very fragile because of the inflammation caused by the virus and the body's reaction to it. So we've learned not to do that. Uh, and so a lot of the patients now are not receiving ventilation, whereas they would have done in March and April. And it, that's saving lives. Drugs, there are antibodies, there are steroids, dexamethasone, a large study, a randomized trial performed here, and there are a whole range of other anti-inflammatory drugs used for other diseases like baricitinib for rheumatoid arthritis. And it's been shown to have a very positive effect on the early phase of COVID lung infection and dampening down the inflammation. So it's a lot better to be treated in November this year than it would have been in March of this year if you have COVID. It's also true that somehow the illness is different this time round. Um, you know, the first wave was predominantly old people. The average age of death was 82.4. This, it's a bit younger, not that much younger for death, but much younger for the number of people coming forward with lung problems. And young people, I mean, even people in their 60s are on the whole much fitter than people in their 80s. I think we don't need another lockdown. I would hope not. I think the problem with the tier system is how behavioral aspects of whether people really follow it. And uh, I think as long as we can keep the lid on the areas that are very hot, uh, there's a good chance we'll get away without any more national lockdown. Could something like this happen again? Could it be a variant of the virus? Could it throw society again? I don't think so. I, I think we are much better prepared in all sorts of ways. All hospitals have uh, pandemic plans now. They all have obviously stores of uh, PPE and the personal protective equipment. They have better diagnostics. The scale up of testing is there. If a new pathogen, a new disease causing organism that we'd never seen before suddenly arose, we'd be in a much better position to sort that out and to sort any illness it caused out than we were in February of uh, this year. I think because of that, I think there's reason for, that, for really great optimism that next year by Easter, everything will start to feel normal. Summer holidays will be there. I don't think I'd want to go on a cruise ship. I'm not sure you would either, <laughs> but uh, uh, I think holidays will be back next summer. <laughs>